John 1 verses 50b and 51, and this is what it says. Jesus speaks to Nathanael and he says, from now on, from now. Now this is 2,000 years ago, so if Jesus said it 2,000 years ago, don't you think it's time that it starts working now? From now on, you'll see greater things. Maybe we should make the greater greater. From now on, you'll see greater things. Okay, then he tells us the greater things. The A part is, you'll see heaven open. So many people are trying to scream the heavens opened, and it stays brass. They should read the Bible. Jesus already opened it 2,000 years ago. Okay, point number one, you'll see heaven open. Point number B is, what will happen if heaven is open? You'll see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Say, it's time to see the greater things. Hebrews chapter 1 right up to chapter 8 especially tells us about his high priestly office, starting with chapter 3 and 4, where he started being called the high priest or after the order of Melchizedek that went into the most holy place. And uh, chapter 4 tells us how we can now enter boldly to that place. Chapter 5 tells us we've got to know more about this high priestly order. And uh, it's for mature people to enter there. Chapter 6 says he swore that if we enter this place, we'll be blessed with Abraham, with blessing things and bless us and multiply. Chapter 7, he says, after this priestly order, he is the king and the priest of righteousness and of peace. Chapter 8, he says, now the main point is we have a high priest. What is this high priest doing? Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 34, he's interceding for us. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, he's interceding for us. Hebrews 7, 25, he's interceding for us. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24, he's interceding for us. We have a high priest that's busy praying for us right at the throne of the Father with his own blood, with his own intercessory prayer. And do you think when Jesus was on earth, the Father heard him? Whenever he said, he said, whatever I do is because of the Father. And the Bible says, deep in the night, early in the morning, Jesus went out and he prayed, Father. You know, he looked up to heaven and said, Father. He looked up to heaven and he said, open. He looked up to heaven and spit in the guy's eyes. He looked up to heaven. The Father never said no. He always said yes. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6, it says, uh, we have an anchor for our souls. Some Bibles would say, we have an anchor to keep our hearts secure. We have an anchor that enters in behind the veil where Jesus went in as a forerunner. So if Jesus went in as a forerunner behind the veil, then it means we can run behind him. So he split the thing open. There's no more veil. We can go directly to the throne of grace and find help in time of trouble. Hebrews 4, verse 14 through 16, and Hebrews 10, verse 19 through 21. It's a new and living way by the blood of Jesus that he has prepared for us. So let us come boldly into the Holy of Holies is to the throne of grace and God is ready to answer you in great things. Now look at Jesus. These words spake Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. Verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine is thine, and thine is mine, and I'm glorified in them. Verse 22. The glory which thou gave me, I have given them. That they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be Perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and loved me even as you have loved me. Verse 15. I pray not that you should take them out of the world. Rapture people, cheers. But that thou should keep them from the evil. I have given them 
my glory. Second part. Because Hebrews chapter 1 starts off with this God who at sundry times and diverse manners spoke to the fathers by the prophets as in these last days spoken to us by the Son whom he has appointed heir of all things. Verse 3, he is the brightness of the glory of the Father. He is the outraying brilliance of the divine. He is the sole expression of the glory of the Father. So Jesus said, if I operate, it's because I've got glory. So Father, it's their turn. So I give them my glory as you gave me your glory. And by this they will be able to be as you and I are one. Philip, have you not seen me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Now I pray that this glory will make them understand that they are one with me in glory. So going on in this Hebrews 1 type of thing, he says, and to the son, he now says, sit on my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. And in the same story, he says, but of the angels, he said, are they not sent out? He never said to angels, sit, but to the son, he says, sit. But to the angels, he said, don't sit, be sent out. To be ministers of those who are heirs of salvation. So in all the epistles, this is Paul's prayer. He wants you to know what your inheritance is, what your inheritance is, what your inheritance is. We love to pray Ephesians 1. Oh, I pray the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that you may have open eyes of your understanding, spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know what is your inheritance. Okay, so Jesus left us a testament. If he left us a testament, it means there's an inheritance. So why is it that we don't get our inheritance? Because our eyes are not open of our understanding. And he tells us about this heirs of salvation. There's something that will minister to you that will help you get your inheritance. Are the angels not winds and flames of fire sent out to be ministers for those who are to be heirs of salvation? In this whole scenario of Father, I give them the glory. I want them to be one. You have given them the glory. I want the world to know. He says, in the midst of all these scriptures, right in the middle, don't take them out of the world, but keep them from the evil. If it's not good, it's evil. Is fighting good? Then it's evil. Is trouble good? Then it's evil. Is cancer good? Then it's evil. Is bankruptcy good? Then it's evil. Is insolvency good? Then it's evil. Keep them from the evil. This is the high priestly prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. He lifted up his eyes towards heaven. From now on, you'll see heaven open. And you'll see greater things. So if the heaven is open, part of the greater things is angels will ascend and descend. They get a command and they send forth on winds and flames of fire. They hold hands as they are sent forth. But when they come to their mission, they lose their hands and they split up as flames of fire. The wind drive them along and they go back to the throne like lightning to get the next command. If we know... Second Thessalonians. Verse 14. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is written to those that know the prayer of John 17 that they are able 
to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ because this was his prayer. Now we know Hebrews 1.3 is the express image, the sole image of the glory of the Father. We know that 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, As we all with open face now behold in a glass the glory of God, we are changed from glory to glory into the very image of Christ. Romans 8 verse 29 and 30, Those whom he foreordained, he predestinated, chosen and called to be conformed to the image of his Son. Colossians 1 we already quoted. So he wants you to be Jesus Christ, look like Jesus, walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, have the glory. Hmm? Verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. That's Hebrews 6 verse 19, 20 and 21. We have an anchor for our souls that enter and goes behind the veil where Jesus went in as a forerunner for us. So let us come boldly there. Okay, whatever we got there, everlasting consolation. Verse 17. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work and truth. Okay, do you know what establish means? Unshakable, immovable, irreprovable, total peace, total rest, no frustration, no irritation, no anxiety, no fear, no anger, total peace. That is to be established with everlasting consolation and have total comfort because you are obtaining the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that you have a high priest praying for you. And this is his prayer. Father, heaven's open. You're going to see greater things, angels ascending and descending. Keep them from the evil. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it with you. Is it with you? Verse 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, from all men have not faith, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Say yes. Come on, church, it's time to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will establish you, comfort and have you total, and deliver you, and keep you from all evil. including people that have no faith, irritable, frustrating people. Say, yes, Lord. I put my name there. The us and the use and the me's is now quibbus. Come on, say, God is faithful and he's going to deliver me. He's going to keep me from all evil. Second Timothy chapter 4. Okay, this is just to help you to understand. If he's not good, so if I am kept from evil, blessing I will bless you. Abraham, molting I will multiply you, Abraham. Thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God is good and he intends good for you. I know the thoughts that I have towards you, good thoughts of peace and prosperity. 
Now listen to this. Listen, this is, Paul just prayed in the Thessalonian church a certain prayer. He mentioned the prayer to his people, and now he's sending a letter to uh, Timothy. Look what he says, verse 14. Alexander the great, I mean the coppersmith, <laughs> did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. You must be aware also. For he greatly withstood our words because he just prayed for the Thessalonians, prayed that our word would go out. Hmm? At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be made fully known, that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Alexander. And the other suckers, they with the guy. I was delivered from them. Did not Jesus say, Behold, I give you all authority and power over all the power of the evil or the enemy. You shall trample on serpents and scorpions nothing shall harm you did he not say in first peter chapter 5 behold your adversary walks around like a roaring lion you must withstand him you know didn't paul says i've been delivered okay and the lord verse 18 shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. For those who do not have understanding, Hebrews 12 ends like this. Seeing that we receive an unshakable kingdom, an immovable kingdom, we are preserved, 1 Peter chapter 1, to receive this kingdom stuff. You know what preserve is? You don't get bad. You pick up a bottle and say, preservatives. And you don't know, it's not good, that stuff for your body. You know it's not good, that stuff that they preserve the stuff with to make it stand long on the shelf. It's bad stuff for you. Paul says, but God will preserve me. You know why he will preserve me? He will first deliver me. And after he's delivered me from all evil, I will be preserved. And you know what I'm going to get? I will get this kingdom stuff, which is righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Immovable, unshakable, no evil. If somebody wants it, you can have it. Father, I pray that you keep them from the evil one. Portion of it is I have given them my glory. We now read about he was the sole expression of the glory. In John chapter 1, Jesus was the word that was made flesh. And in verse 14, he says, the word was made flesh and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. But after that, he became the first begotten so that you can be part of the begotten sons. So now we are begotten of God by the word of God, James chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1. We are now begotten of God. But there he was, the only begotten, full of glory. The law was given by Moses. Grace, okay, we touched it now twice. And truth came by Jesus Christ. He was full of grace. And out of the fullness of this grace have we all received Grace for grace. So Paul says if we understand this gospel of grace, we will understand we can obtain the glory. If we can understand we can obtain the glory, we will be kept from all evil. If we kept from all evil, we will be preserved, we will be established, we will be immovable, we will have the kingdom what we are busy with, and we will be the people that will be at total rest, and nothing evil will come. In other words, you'll only have good stuff happening to you. So Jesus came, brought us grace, totally opposite of the law. Because Romans 4 and Romans 10 says, if righteousness by the law then faith and is made empty. 
But Christ is the end of the law to everyone that believe. Romans 4 and Romans 10. Okay. Acts chapter 6, verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, the Cyrenians, the Alexandrians, and of them Cilicia and Asia disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Now remember, the synagogue people have Moses and the law. They don't have Jesus and grace. So any message of the gospel would be opposing and offending them. That's why we have the epistles. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, this man ceased not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. What's the holy place? The temple. Now they, the false witnesses is they added their portion, but what he did do, he did speak against Moses and the temple. We're going to read it now. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. What would make angels' faces different than people's faces. They are always right in the presence of God, looking into his face. Psalm 68, 103, 104, 34, 35, Ezekiel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 10. They are always right in the presence of God, waiting for a command. That's why he's God's eyes are like flaming fire because the angels are flaming fires and they are flickering, reflecting in God's eyes, waiting to get commands. God's eyes are not fire, God's eyes are love. The fire in his eyes are the angels standing right, beholding his face, and they reflecting in his eyes, waiting to go forth like wind and fire, go back like lightning, go forth like wind and fire, back like lightning, to operate and minister on behalf of those that are heirs of salvation. If you know it, no evil but only good so where's Stephen he's ready to be executed they say he's guilty of blasphemy he speaks against the law against Moses and against our temple he hasn't said a word yet. And as they look at him, his face becomes like an angel. So where's Stephen? John chapter 1, verse 50 and 51. From now on, you'll see greater things. You'll see heaven open and angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. I'm sure it's more than just looking like an angel. I think an angel came and yeah. fell on the man. We get that in Acts 8, Acts 12, Acts 27 and stuff like that. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men, brethren, fathers, hearken. Now you've got to say yes. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham. Okay, I thought it is the blessings of Abram. He was declared righteous by faith. So now we are blessed with Abram. If the law could make us righteous, faith is made empty. But we are blessed with Abram and not with Moses. Moses brought the law. Abram talked about faith and believing in God. Now Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, Galatians 3, so that we can receive the blessings of Abraham. 
and the Spirit by faith. So we are blessed with Abraham and not blessed with Moses. So our blessings does not come from Deuteronomy 28. That's law blessings. You've got to do to get. Our blessings come by faith. We believe to get. So now the rest of the story goes on how Stephen now has his discourse. He tells about Abram, Isaac, Jacob, and then he tells about Joseph. How Joseph was sold by his brethren, came into Potiphar's house, went to Pharaoh's house, into the prison. How he was brought out, promoted from Jobur to prime minister. How after being prime minister, uh, you know, his, his father found out about, you know, there's, there's the corn in Egypt. And God sent Moses ahead, you know, the sun and moon stars will bow before him. The sheaves will bow before him. And he made supplies, got the dreams of Pharaoh, interpreted, great men of God. But the Bible says, and then there arose a king. Verse 18, another king arose which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers. So he tells how it went better with them, better with them, because Joseph was prime minister. But then a king arose that did not acknowledge Joseph in the position that Pharaoh put him, and immediately they started doing evil to God's people. Now we know what we are busy with. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, right down to 13. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. So if you deliver us from evil because we pray our Father let your kingdom come, then we will have the kingdom, the power, and the glory. No evil, only good. Verse 20, in which time Moses was born. Then he told how Moses was picked up by the daughter of Pharaoh, you know, in the river Nile and brought up in the wisdom of Egypt. Verse 30, and how he killed the Egyptian, remember, then he had to run away for his life. Verse 30, when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Psalm 104 Quoted again in Hebrews chapter 1, the last two verses. Are his angels not ministering spirits all sent out to, the Amplified Bible says, to the assistance of those who are to be heirs of salvation? Are you saved? Then you are supposed to be an heir. If you're an heir, you are blessed with all the blessings that God has to bless you with because you are his son. And everything the father and the son has is now yours. And to get it, you've got to be delivered from all evil so that you can get all good. So you have the law and grace, the gospel and judgment and stuff like that. And here Stephen, his face becomes like an angel, tells about the law, the temple and Moses. And he comes to Moses and he says, let's start with Moses. He saw in a bush flames of fire and the angel of the Lord appeared. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came. How could the voice of the Lord came when he saw an angel on fire? Because God rides on the wings of winds, which is angels. God makes clouds his chariots, which is the dust that the angels kick up because of the lightning bolt thunder power with which they appear. And God is making them chariots, Ezekiel 1, Psalm 68, Psalm over and over. So God rides on the wings of the angels and then God appears. So first the angel come, flames of fire. Then God says, Moses, if you see me first, you'll die, man. So let's just put the angels there. Let the fire just protect us because there'll be a wall of fire around you to protect you. To protect you against what? My very glory that I want to give you. So be protected till you get the revelation and then get right into the glory. Okay. God said, this is holy ground. Verse 34. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt. I have heard their groanings. I have come down 
to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. Deliver us from evil and God shall deliver me from all evil. He has delivered me from the mouth of the lion and I'm sure he will deliver me from all evil. Father, keep them from the evil. Deliver us from evil. Hmm? This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made you ruler and a judge? The same did God send by a ruler and delivered by the hand of an angel which appeared to him in the bush. Amen. He brought them out after he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and the Red Sea in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses which said to the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto your brethren. Like unto me, him shall you hear. There's Hebrews 1. God with thunder town spoke to us by the prophets, now speaks by the Son. This is he that was in the church, in the wilderness, with the angel which spoke to him in Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but they thrust him out. Now he speaks about, okay, you, uh, must I write it down? Angels, angels, flames of fire. I'm going to deliver you. He says, this angel spoke and gave living words to Moses and he says where on Mount is that right did he say it it's spelled different in different translations what did he get on Mount Sinai the law so the rest of the story, Stephen now tells how David wanted to build a temple. He couldn't build a temple. He found favor. How Solomon built a temple, but God doesn't in that dwell in that temple. God does not dwell in temples made with hands. So he's, there he hits the temple thing. You know, he hits the Moses thing. He hits the law thing. And he says in verse 49, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. You can find that Isaiah 66, Daniel 7, Isaiah 6. Every time when the throne is mentioned, there was angels around. Every time there was fire, there was smoke, there was lightnings. Now he says to them, verse 50, you stiff naked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. Verse 53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Okay. Stop. We just heard the angel appeared, the angel appeared, the angel appeared. And God spoke and God spoke and God spoke. God spoke living words and he said, Angels brought you the law. But you didn't listen to that law. Keep your finger there, go to Galatians 3. Verse, verse 18. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abram by promise. Wherefore then do you want to serve the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels. For the second and for the third time, angels gave the law. Is the law now against God's promises? No. But the scripture concluded all under sin so that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up unto faith. In other words, you could not have faith when you were under the law. You still can't. Which should afterwards be revealed. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. That we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Verse 29, and if you be Christ, then are you Abram's seed and heirs according to the promise. Angels brought the law, angels brought the law, 
angels brought the law. We are not under the law, but we are living a life of faith by grace. And it's all free. Galatians 5.1 Stand therefore in this liberty whereby Christ has made you free. And do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. But we all, with open face, So if the law is there, you don't have an open face. If the law is there, you don't have an open heaven. If the law is there, Deuteronomy says twice, your heaven will be brass. We pray and pray, and it seems like heaven is closed. Oh, heaven is so closed. No, 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 heaven is open. You close it by going out of liberty into the law, not understanding what angels wants to minister to you in your life because of the presence of God riding on the wings of angels. Beholding as in a glass, we are changed into the same image. What image? Christ's image, Romans 8 verse 29. 30. From glory, the old one, to glory, the new one, that is verse 9, the ministration of glory, condemnation, and the ministration of righteousness, glory. From the condemnation, the glory of the old, to the freedom of the glory of the new, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. No wonder Paul says, Galatians 3 verse 1, who have bewitched you? You in whose very eyes Christ was portrayed as being crucified. This one thing do I want to know from you. Did you receive the Spirit because you obeyed the law or because you heard the gospel, the message of faith? How do you want to go back now to the law after you receive faith? He says, and he who does wonders among you. Now we add it with Moses and with Stephen. Does he do it because you obey the law? Or because he gave you his marvelous Holy Spirit? Amen. Stephen did great power and wonders. Heaven's open sign. Hmm? So in Thessalonians, in Timothy, there in Acts, he talks about the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. Galatians 1. Verse 3, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now remember the glory and stuff that we are busy with. Amen. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. So when it comes to Galatians, you know, comparing the law and grace, he says, this is why you get this grace. Because God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has one aim, to deliver you from evil. That is the will of God our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. Though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. 
And I saw another angel in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, all nations, all kindreds, all tongues, all peoples. Okay. If we, or an angel, preach another gospel, Let that one be accursed. For there is no other gospel. What is the whole reference? How was the law given to Moses? In other words, angels knows exactly what the law says. And if after Jesus came, the heavens are now open, and angels ascend and descend to minister to you, would they take you to law? appeared unto me and said and you must see the laws they have in those books after the angel appeared unto me on my 40 day fast the angel said that and I can guarantee you 90% of those books are law books so let them be accursed Zechariah and he showed me chapter 3 Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away his filthy garments. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you. And I will clothe you with chains of raiment. Remember, this is prophets. What were the prophets doing? Prophesying about the coming Messiah and the New Testament. This is what the prophets were for. It's not good stories. It's to bring us to the new. To bring us to Christ and to bring us to what's going to happen with us. Okay? So if he talks about you're full of sin, I'm going to take your sin away. God help them to prophesy what's going to happen when Christ comes. Remember, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Verse 6. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you keep my charge, you shall also judge my house and shall keep my courts, and I will give you places to walk among these that stand by. Okay. Do you know what stand by means? You have an amplifier and it has a standby button. It means you don't have to switch the whole thing off, but you don't have to use all the power. And you press the button, the standby goes off, and you immediately on full power without delay. So you don't have to wait for the thing to warm up again. So where's angels? In front of God's throne. Where did Joshua and the high priest saw the angel of the Lord? There by God's throne. So God says, if you will walk in my ways, you can come and walk with these that stand by. Thank you. In the presence of angels. You can walk here. And, I mean, if God takes the standby button off, they charge like lightning. Wind and fire, there's no delay. Hear now, O Joshua, high priest, you and your fellows that sit before you, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Isaiah 11, and a branch, a root came out of dry ground, and a branch out of the stem of Jesse. And on him the spirit of the Lord shall rest, the spirit of counsel and might to string. Chapter 4. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me, 
as a man that is wakened out of sleep. Remember Acts chapter 12? Peter was guarded by four different guards in prison, and uh, the son of Herod the, Gre- or son of Herod the Great, son of Herod was supposed to be, you know, beheading Peter the next day. And an angel came and wakened him. <laughs> Same thing. Verse 5. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Know you not what these be? And I said, No. And he said, This is the word of the Lord. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone, and here it comes. There shall be shoutings of grace, grace. The law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And now of His fullness have we all received grace for grace. Verse 10. For who has despised, I hope you're going to be with me, the day of small things. Behold, you will see greater things. So if you don't see it yet, don't despise the little stuff because this is prophecies are now. Don't despise when God starts doing stuff and somebody's already getting greater things because you will see greater things. You will see heaven open and you will see angels ascending and descending. And if you stick with this, come on, I will give you permission to come walk among these standbys. Oh, Lord. Verse 3, then said he unto me, this is the curse. Okay, just look here. Get the message from the heart of God. If we or an angel from heaven bring any other gospel than the one of grace and mercy, let him be accursed. Now we see angel of the Lord, angel of the Lord, angel of the Lord. Not by might, nor by power, grace, grace. Sins are forgiven, iniquity is taken away. You can come walk here in front of these that stand by, the angels, ready to get commands to operate for you, to go and deliver you, help you, save you, protect you, be on your side. So to understand that here's the curse that go forth over the face of the earth. Verse 5. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now your eyes and see what is this that goes forth. Listen, what are they? They are sent forth, the angels, to be ministering spirits. What are they? Wind and fire. They have chariot wheels. They have clouds. They are sent forth from the presence of God. Verse 5. Then the angel that talked with me went forth. In other words, he was sent on a mission. Lift up now your eyes and see what is it that goes forth. What is it that goes forth? The curse. What is the curse? Those that brings the other gospel. And I said, what is it? And he said, this is an ephah. What on earth is an ephah? That goeth forth. He said, moreover, this is their resemblance. Whose resemblance? Verse 3. The curse that's going all over the earth. Listen, this is going to be tough, but it's going to be great. It's going to set a few people free. Free, free, not three, free. This is their resemblance. Behold, there was lift up a talent of lead. What is lead? Heavy. Burden. Yoke bondage and this is a woman that sit in the midst of the ephah and he said this is wickedness he's referring to the curse he's referring to the ephah their resemblance and what are they they have led bondage heavy this is wickedness, and he cast it into the midst of the ephah. Okay, maybe we should tell you what an ephah is. Yes, 
It's funny that no translation has it in. Don't you know what I mean? It means what I give you is not true. It's a measure, but there's no standard to a measure. A measure's got to be one meter, one foot, six inches, 10 centimeters. That's a measure. It's got to be a liter or a gallon. But if it has no measure, how can I give you one pound of sugar, one kilogram of sugar, one liter of petrol, one gallon of gas? How can I give it to you if there's no standard? They have measures, but no standards. So in other words, if this thing suits me, I'll tell it to you. But if that one doesn't suit me, it's not part of my measure. This is how law people operate. They take what's necessary for the moment. If they want to fast, they find the law to put you in bondage how you must fast. They will not tell you to fast decently. Look around you and say, my goodness, Lord, I'm going to cut that out, cut that out, chuck, chuck that CD away, throw that tape away. They're always busy with measuring selves among themselves. And Paul says, no, let's, let's get the gospel. Let's get this law out. Let's get Moses out. Let's get Jesus Christ in. Let's get the grace in. Let's get the mercy in. Let's get condemnation out. Let's get judgment out. Let's get accusation out. Let's get righteousness in. Let's get peace in. Let's get the kingdom of God to operate. Why will we be condemned and judged by measures that men will put on us if we can live by grace? Chapter 11, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealous. I've espoused you to one husband. I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtlety, subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ, Galatians 1. For if he that comes preach another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles, but though I be rude in speech, yet I'm not in knowledge. Hmm? Verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. No marvel. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works, Verse 20, for you suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take you, if a man exalt himself, and if a man smite you on the face. So all these self-exalters, all these people that devour you and your money because that's the case there previously, all the people that bring you into bondage, stand in this liberty. Uh, I don't want to miss you. Wear with Christ and don't be put again into the yoke of bondage. Don't be put in bondage by people that come and say, oh, we are apostles. I'm not saying anything about the apostles. Bless all the apostles. I'm saying if people come and say that and they put you in bondage with doctrine and you are fearing the apostle, you're in bondage, and God says, that is another gospel. Psalm 37. 37 verse 18. The Lord know the days of the righteous, or the upright. Their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. 40, verse 13. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say to me, ha, ha, ha. Let all those that seek Thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. So our Father, which art in heaven, heaven open, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. Angels, 
will protect you if you understand don't go for the fairy stuff go for the real stuff and all evil will be kept away from you your dwelling will be safe your body will be safe your business will be safe your life will be safe that stuff is going to sell that home is going to sell that business is going to go and you're going to get your breakthrough and angels is there to assist you in the name of the Lord Jesus let's just read the last portion of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 Besides, to which of the angels has God ever said, sit on my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are not the angels all ministering spirits sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to enter salvation? Since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention to the truth we heard, that it don't drift past us. Anything that could hurt you or harm you, angels are there to deliver you, deliver you, deliver you, deliver you. They're at your assistance. They're on standby. You can walk and get them to start operating. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.